she burp? little dog. Thank <laughs> you. I'm gonna start here in a minute, dear. I don't I don't mind if you wanna be out here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no gigantic farts, okay?
think it's time. I see Kimmy in there. Okay. Kimmy's already in there watching me set up. I'm gonna get a long handle brush out for this. Um, so I noticed this is totally not relevant to my paintings, um, but I noticed on TikTok and somewhere also on like Instagram that someone was talking about pointing your brushes, cleaning your brushes and making sure they hold a point in between uses because you want your brush Stay nice and silky and crisp in between. It's a good way to preserve them, right? So I did. I have several of the brand names they mentioned. One of them, the one I saw mentioned, is responsible for this brush. And as you can see, is it up there? Yes. You can see there are loose hairs everywhere. It's because brush pointing liquid and brush cleaner soaps, we all use this, we all love this stuff, right? Pull it up. Um, it's very well known, all those things, and the brush pointing liquid is really similar to that. But they don't actually do much for the hair in your brush. Um, most of my brushes are natural hair, only a few are synthetic, but even the synthetic ones, they like to be treated like hair. Hi Jordan, you know all about hair. You know what I'm talking about. Even synthetic brushes like to be treated like baby hair, like fine hair. And when you're dipping in at all these paints and things, you're, you're damaging the hair structure. Even if it's synthetic, it's, it's damaging each individual hair. So even if you use some kind of brand name, you know, brush pointings, liquids, soaps, you're going to get that split end thing going on. Unless you know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing, you get a really crispy brush and it stays good for a really, this is like a four year old brush. They last forever. But you have to wash them right after you use them. And you know, this soap, this stuff is fine. Um, dish soap is fine. The Blue Dawn breaks up oil paint if you're using oils. Um, any kind of hand soap works fine if you're just using um, watercolor or acrylics. Uh, you can soak your brushes to get the paint out of them, and squeeze them. But the best thing I've found for both cleaning and conditioning, pointing your brushes is actually this. And yes, this looks like some kind of greenish sort of magical um, I think Day said I was like a brush witch, but it's, there's nothing magical about this. This is a little squirt or two of literally the goddamn cheapest, absolute cheapest jug of hair conditioner you can buy at the dollar store. You stick a little bit in a jar like that, and you want to wash your brushes, or you can put a squirt of shampoo in there to wash, too. This needs to go away. Um, Stick it in there, mush it around. It's like conditioning and washing your hair. It's like a hair wash and conditioner all in one. And now when you point this, you're gonna get a nice point. So if you're using this stuff, you get not only the nice point on your brush until you break it up to use it again, but it conditions. It feeds the, the hair shaft in your brushes. It's really good stuff. Um, I mean, it's one of those like starving artist tips and tricks. You won't hear it really in art school because they want you to use stuff that costs money. Um, but if you're broke and you want to keep your brushes lasting forever because you're poor, don't use that fancy conditioner stuff, that brush pointing, brush pointer you know, expensive soaps. All you really need is the cheapest dollar store conditioner because your brushes aren't being exposed to the sun. 
they're not getting any kind of damage additional to whatever you're doing while you're painting. So in between painting, point them, point them up tight with that conditioner, let it sit on there, let the brush dry out, and it will um, keeps the hairs nice and soft and keeps your brush pointed in between uses. I'm going to check and see if Day is here yet, or Moms, sorry Moms, because I'm collabing with the shop for this live stream. Let's see who's here. Nobody. Nobody's here. How are you guys here if nobody's here? What's going on? I guess I gotta wait a few minutes. Oh, I gotta wait like five minutes. That's okay. I know you guys were watching me set up. Um, so, what have I got going on today? I did want to talk about this stuff. This was the important stuff. Um, so I've got a water bucket. These are like a buck or two. Also super cheap. I've got some of these. Uh, these are for henna. I use them for really loose splashes, droplets, and lines on my paper. I'm working with watercolor. So these are full of uh, waterproof inks. Once they dry, they're waterproof. You can paint over them. As long as they're wet, you can smear them and smudge them and dilute them. Um, I've got um, my butcher's tray, which I never clean mine, obviously. That's really disgusting. It's never been cleaned. Um, most people get these because they're easy to clean. Just get a scraper, and you can literally scrape anything out of these and clean them up really easily. They're not cheap at an art store, but they're really cheap at like thrift stores, restaurant supply stores, stuff like that. So those are really good. This is like a $2 palette I got at Michael's. What can I say? These things are cheap as fuck. They last forever. You can put them through the dishwasher. So if you use watercolor, actually even if you use oil, if you're using an oil buster kind of uh, dish detergent, those can go through the dishwasher. Um, what else do I have here? My brushes range from really expensive. I have two of these really expensive, nice Princeton Neptune. You can see this one's really old. And this one's slightly newer. This is about two years old. This is about four years old. I've got this cheap ass giant brush. These are squirrel. I don't know what this is. Um, this is kind of a nice brush. It's tackle and this is synthetic. Um, these little black brushes, I like these for watercolor because you can get a variety of shapes. They're really, really cheap. They're synthetic. This is a big ass synth uh, synthetic brush. And you can see I have, where's the camera? I have brutalized this thing. You can see every split end on that. I use it to beat up the canvas or the paper. Um, this is my shiv, I use it for framing. Framing. Um, I've got a medium grade brush in here that I was soaking because I forgot to wash it last time. If you forget to wash a brush, get some Blue Dawn, coat the brush in it, soak it. Never soak them upright like I'm doing right now. I had this soaking flat in the butcher's block, kind of like this, with just the brush in the water. And then after you've soaked it, you can see it gets all the paint out. Um, that Blue Dawn really does a good job. You can use this stuff. I'm going to keep showing you this stuff because, I mean, I bought this on sale forever ago for like six bucks. It's a small piece. It's not very good. This is probably ten cents worth of conditioner for your hair with a tiny squirt of shampoo in it. Just the cheapest dollar store shit. And you kind of just massage that into the hair of the brush. Look, it does the exact same thing. I'm getting all the rest of that paint out. And on top of that, you get the benefit of conditioning the hairs. This is a non-synthetic. This is not a synthetic brush. This is a natural hair brush. So it does need the conditioner pretty desperately. Or it'll get those split ends. Um, I think that's all the gear I've got out. Oh, I've got a little fountain pen here. This is a little moon man. I don't know. I don't know why I have that out. And this big long-handled brush, which is also a synthetic um, 
it's pretty stiff. You can see when I pull on it, it wants to spring back into shape. Um, these are these are really good. These are really good for strong marks on the canvas. Um, but I don't usually use a long handle when I'm working on a smaller piece. And today we're working on a smaller piece. And Day's here, so he can handle everybody's questions. Hello, everyone. So. I've got music in the background. Let me know if anybody, if that bothers you or it's, if it's making it hard to hear what I'm doing. It's just easier for me to paint with, with sound. Um, so I already prepped this paper. And the way I prepped this, pull this back a little. The way I prepped this was I, um, I literally just took water and I took my big shitty brush and I scrubbed water into it. Um, now, with good watercolor paper like this, it comes with sizing in the paper. And the sizing uh, is what keeps the, um, the paper consistently spreading water and wetness around, it helps it dry out, helps it stay flat. Um, but it also can interfere if you've, never pre if you've never gotten the paper wet, it's more likely to buckle. It makes the surface a little bit slick. So I wanted a, a really absorbent kind of spongy surface. And this is a cold press. I don't know if you can see the texture, but it's got a lot of texture to it. I'm not doing anything precise. I want that texture. And again, just like last time, I'm gonna go, and I'm kind of just making shapes. This is a really soft brush. So I can go from sort of like fine little edgy details and then also grind it and smear it into the paper. Um, wherever it's wet, it's gonna sink into the paper and it's gonna make everything in that area softer. So if I drop some ink somewhere or some paint that's wet, it's gonna spread out. And if I leave it there for a long time, it'll spread out and fill up that entire area of wetness. Um, a lot of people do like novelty videos where they, you know, they get a surface wet like that. And then they're showing, you know, they put a drop there and it, it colors the whole thing in instantly. This is all they're doing. That's all they're doing. Um, if you put this in a dry area, it doesn't go anywhere. But if you follow it to a wet area, it spreads out that's going to fill up that whole area with blue. And I guess that means I should be using a lot of this blue because again, abstract. Look at that. I'm just going to fuck this whole thing up. There we go. Take it. Take the blue. I guess it's teal. It's aqua. It's like a light blue. It's not really blue. I need my old painting rag, my friend here. And today I'm going to be working with what um, Salvador Dali called it, uh, the paranoia critical method. And the way this works is that you've got to have um, sort of a patterned textured surface with very dark and very light areas. So you don't really want um, uh, too many midtones to begin with. You don't want it to get too dark to begin with because what we're going to do is we're going to find shapes and then define them into something recognizable. So this is a semi-abstract piece, I guess. Um, the last one I did was an abstract expressionist piece where I just kind of, I let the force flow through me. This one's the paranoid critical method. So we're not going to let anything flow through once we get to a certain point we're going to decide what it is and that's what we're going to paint we're not there yet this stuff is just set up for that we'll get a little white a little yellow get a little spread that out a little bit and it doesn't matter now at this stage if there are two shapes that are the same because everything's going to get fucked up in a minute here purposely I don't know if there's another term for fucked up that makes more sense than that, but I'm just going to say we're fucking it up on purpose. So now yeah. this, I've got 
of water in this really crappy brush. This is a really crappy long, long bristle brush. This is the fun part. I don't have to pay attention. I'm just kind of scrubbing. I'm scrubbing things around, getting them very damp. Look at all the bubbles. Ugh. Gross old rag. There's nothing predictable about this rag. If I throw this on there in a different direction, it absorbs a different amount in every little spot. So no two things the same. I don't even have to try it. The rag is doing the work for me. Moist. Yeah, Travis, it's moist. I can see that word from all the fucking way. <laughs> all the things I can read, it's Travis saying the word moist. <laughs> dry, this is moist, yes. Um, so now I'm just gonna call that prepared. This canvas, this paper is prepared. It's got sort of an overall, too much light, it's got an overall texture to it. It's got all kinds of shapes and weird things going on. I'm gonna look at it from this direction instead. What do I see in this? What's in there? Come out. I don't see anything yet. I don't see anything. You know what I see? Wait, I see something. I don't know if you can see it. What do you see? I see a bunny. Let me see if I can get out of the light a little bit. What do you see? Oh, with like the two long ears on top? You see the yellow ears? Yeah, I see the ears. It's some kind of... I don't want to Donnie Darko this, though. Ah. I want to make a Donnie Darko painting. <laughs> what the hell? What, what's what's going to happen this way? I think... Now see if I look at it this way. I see, you know, we've got sky. The sky, obviously, it's blue. That might be tainting my perceptions, but there's a hand here. Mm. I can see a hand here. Um, so I'm going to pick that out of the painting. And I'm going to do it by using similar colors to what I've got already. And I'm just going to kind of edge in what I think I'm seeing. If I'm wrong, I'll know in a minute here. My subconscious is telling me there's a hand there. My subconscious is not always right. So I'm kind of picking it out a little bit. It's sort of, I know, these lights are so crazy. I might need to turn one off here. But it feels like there is a hand there, a yellow hand. I'm going to turn one of these lights out because it's, I can't show you what I'm seeing. Oh, hang on, one minute. Oh, oh, is it too dark? No, I think that's good. No, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, look at that. No, no, that light's so crazy. There Built we go. it. Yeah. Built it a little. But yeah. Tilted a little. There's yeah. There. And it's it's sort of reaching down. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that hand. I don't think I like it. Fuck it up. If you don't like something, <laughs> try something else. This is the beauty of any form of abstract art is you don't have to make a decision immediately. The painting itself will kind of make decisions for you as you go. It'll, it'll, it'll make your decisions for you. So, so those are kind of minor decisions. I want more down there. Those are the decisions you're making. And I want this to be um, a subdued color painting. So these bright blues and bright yellows are going to end up getting um, really toned down by the end. You know, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm, I've got this bottle and I'm just kind of getting some uh, sienna that's been watered down. And now it looks like a total mess. I'll show you. When I tilt it up, it's gonna run, look. Ah, oh, cool. I like that. Get the rag back out. I don't know what shapes it's going to make again. But, you know, there's also something to be said for just great fucking with it, too. Did I cut myself? No, it's red ink. 
paint with blood. Can never be sure. I've, I have, I have, I've, I've been working and I've gotten blood all over the painting. So shit happens. It looks nice when it dries. It's a nice brown. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I did get a little bit of red in there, so let's kind of get a little dull sort of red going on. You want to dull something down? A good way to do it is to add either the opposite color, obviously colored wheel stuff. Um, this greenish blue works really well for that. Or you can add a little black. It darkens it too, but it gives it kind of a bruisey look, especially with reds. It's kind of reds that I like. Get a little red in there. You can see there's the red. Here's it dull, dull, a little more dull. Subduing the color isn't just about adding black though, because black, adding black not only dulls it down, but it doesn't change the tone. It just changes, I don't know if tone is right. It does, all it changes is the saturation. It's less saturated, it's less bright, but black also darkens the color. So if we really want to make this red dull, we want some opposite. We want green. And we want to get that in there. It's not darker than the red. And when you mix these together, you get this sort of off color. It's not red. It's not green. It's some kind of strange brownish tone. I'm making a mess on this one. I like it. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's anybody in there. Sometimes there's somebody in there. And if I can't see a person, a figure, a shape that's recognizable, and I want to do something with a figure, person, or shape, I either got to do another layer or I'm shit out of luck. So let's try another layer before I admit that I'm, I'm shit out of luck and this is going to be totally abstract piece. This is just black. This is straight black ink. And I'm getting a lot of water. And what's going to happen is you're going to see that black running and getting softer at the edges where I made it wet, but it's going to have the hard edge where I left it dry on that side. And then I'm going to bring some of it just a little bit of it up here. That's gray, like a gray. And if I can see white, the white of the paper at this point, I'm going right over it. I don't want to see the white of the paper. I'm not doing that kind of work today. If I wanted to see the paper, I would be using masking fluid on it. Um, and masking fluid would keep it clean and kind of pristine under so again, with the rag, because I want the random shapes this is going to bring me. Uh, Salvador Dali used to paint all of his ocean foam, all of his waves and things, um, by throwing a, a sponge at the canvas, I'm dipping a sponge in white, and throwing just throwing it at the canvas. Awesome. Yeah, and that's how you get all the sea foam. But I don't want sea foam. I just want some kind of vague markings here. They're getting a little black on the painter's rag and going in there to fuck around with it for a minute. So now I actually do see somebody. I've got a little face coming up here and there's a face in front of it. See if we can get them out of there safely. Getting a very large amount of white, Chinese white, mixed with the tiniest, tiniest bit of red. Because this front face, almost, she almost, it almost looks like they're blushing, but I guess so. I don't want to overdo it. And what I'm doing is I'm going in and picking out the highlights. 
of this face, leaving the shadow alone, not being too detailed. I don't, I don't want to end up with anything too um, overdone. But this is what I'm seeing here. Mouth. Chin. Now this is not a beautiful face. I mean, this is not like a classical painting sort of Mona Lisa. It's just um, a vague face appearing in this piece. Get in there and do a little, you know. Right there I'm seeing the tip of the nose. And these are just shapes I'm, I'm seeing in what I'm painting. It's, this is sort of coming out of the paper to me. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't decide to paint a person, but I'm seeing a person. In all that random chaos I made, I'm seeing a person. I don't know if this person's happy, that's not nice. Go. So we've got the beginnings of a face. Cool. Face in there. What's yeah. this up to? I honestly don't know. It might be surrounded by total chaos. And right behind it, I see another face. And this face, a little less distinct, a little more um, distorted. And I'm going to leave it that way. I'm not going to try to make it look more real than it is. I, I don't want to do that. I'm just finding the edges I can see where there would be a highlight and then making that happen. I don't know if anyone has been following me long enough and is in the live right now to remember the um, Neanderthal toothache video, the uh, water slide boobies video from forever ago. No, no I don't know that one. Uh, oh, I did a painting um like this live i did it in about i didn't it wasn't live never mind it wasn't live but i did it in uh, i think three or four hours and i did this um technique it was a paranoid critical method and um it was interesting to paint because i ended up with a woman holding a bird and all these sorts of odd background elements and there was a hand coming out of some liquid around her and I ended up, I got nearly done with this painting. And um, I realized that the hand was just, it just didn't belong. I don't know where it came from. I made it up. I didn't, it didn't come out of the paper. I invented it. And so I painted over it. And it was the only thing in the painting that I got rid of from this stage. And I, I think I, I don't know, I had some kind of thing where when, when I was setting up to film it, I, I decided I wasn't going to look at the camera at all. I was, I was only going to look at the painting, like, like act like the camera wasn't there. And then I decided to paint over that part, and I, I looked right at the camera. And then I went, I painted it over, and I was like, oh, and I looked back at the camera again, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> like, I painted over something. These people watched me paint this thing for, like, 20 minutes detail on this one little spot. And then I didn't want it. And so it was like a hidden, a hidden part of the painting. That painting sold, is long sold and gone, but it was like a hidden thing inside of the painting that probably only the people who watched that video would know about. Um, I think that's still up on my YouTube, actually. I don't think I've ever taken it down. Uh, mainly because I, I, I've had a hard time getting into video content. I don't feel like I'm very good at it. Um, I run out of things to say pretty quickly obviously. And well, live, live is hard. Live is really hard. <laughs> like, I don't mind. I paint in front of people. I don't mind that at all. Yeah. I tattoo in front of people and talk to everybody in the room. But this is like, I mean, if anybody comes in, I, I, I feel like I, I don't get enough viewers sometimes. So I don't know who I'm reacting to or what I'm, is there something to react to? Yeah. 
you know, and then, you know, is anybody asking questions? Does anybody care what I'm doing? Are they just bored and like, this is on in the background? Should I be even talking? Should I shut the fuck up and just have music? I see another face. No, so, I think it's cool that you're talking. I think it's cool to, to hear what you're, what you're thinking and what your technique is and, you know, why you're, you're going about your piece the way you are. I think that's one of the fascinating things about this format. And I mean, currently, you know, we've got three people watching and we've had, I'd say two to four people watching at a time mm -hmm. um, and kind of filtering in and out. Lots of, lots of people coming in and then going. Um, but you've had lots of people drop in just to, just to check it out. So um, other than that moist comment, uh, that, fellow, <laughs> that fellow also said uh, that he sends love. I love and, it. Uh, I I've tattooed him and his family a whole bunch. Uh, they're great people, man. Oh my God, such great people. And then Susanna Briggs Tattoo said hello a little while I ago. Susanna. I should um, say hello. Oh, it's okay. And, and then now it looks like we've got uh, Deidre and Chinchillas watching and Bruzone watching. So hi, hey, everyone. Bruzone, Bruzone. Bruzone. You brew something. What do you brew? And then... Uh, Melinda, just, Melinda Painter has joined also. Hello, everyone. If you guys have any questions, let us know. I am. Um, yeah, I always just feel like I'm, I'm talking to myself. I think it's, I think it's because it's a camera and not yeah. like, like at the shop or when I painted live at the, um, the farmer's market. I mean, there's actual people in front of me. I can, I can, you know, they walk up and they say, Oh my God, what are you doing? Or what is that a picture of? Or yeah talking to them and with this it's hard because i if i stop looking down here to see if anyone's saying anything i forget what i was doing and i don't know but I, I was raised with a crowd around me all the time like a bunch of adults hanging out and stuff i was um, um, raised in hustle and bustle i guess you know other kids and adults and people around so for me, noise and background noise and people talking is like, cool, that is actually a good environment for me to work in. Oh, it's like soothing. It is. It calms me down and allows me to focus. Cool. My oh, Brendan just joined. Hi, Brendan. Hey, Brendan. My shrink says it's ADHD, but <laughs> what did they know? What did they know? I can sit still. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> Prove um, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now we've got uh, a couple of faces. I've got a couple of faces in here. And I, oh, haven't, cool. I haven't really, um, I haven't started emphasizing them yet, but I've got three so far. Oh, God, this light. Oh, yeah, but if you angle it, you can see it. If I angle it and get it, actually, if I get it. Yeah, there you go. Closer out of the light, you can see it. Wow. I'm in through. Yeah. And now, um, I think, I think. I mean, I'm not going for like Renaissance painting today. So I'm not going to make them really distinct. I don't want them to be more distinct. I actually, I really don't know if I want faces in this at all. So I'm going to make these faces have a very chaotic world they're living in. Like I'm, I'm over them being calm faces, making expressions in here. No, some shit's gonna happen to them. So, I think I'm going to start with this one in the middle who looks a little flushed. And I'm just basically, I, I'm just basically um, getting shapes around this that I think are going to draw the viewer's eye because you, you, you will always look at a face first. It's just the human nature mm. subconsciously. If there's a face in something or a, yeah. you, you can find a face in something, that's where you're looking. That's what you want to see. That's what the human mind wants to see other people. We are a social species. We do want to look at other faces, human faces. So if I can um, get this to be not only a draw where your eye is drawn into this little section, but I can get you to look away from it somehow, that's going to be my goal right now, is to draw people into this little, oh, there's some people there, and make them look in and maybe look somewhere else. Um, this one's looking right at us. This one's looking right at us. 
This one's looking over that way. So I need some kind of mark here that brings your eye back over. Um, and again, I don't want to use any bright, bright colors. I've kind of set myself the goal of subdued colors for this piece. So I'm going to get this sort of, um, it's not really a, what's going on here? He's doing something. There's some kind of shapes there. Um, this is not really a, a bright color. When it dries, it'll be very uh, dull, sort of orangey brown. And a really obvious way to get someone's eye to go the direction you want is to use arrow shapes. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm not making arrows necessarily. I'm making these lines, these sort of crossing lines. And I mean, I suppose technically that's an arrow. But um, it's an organic arrow. It's it's not it's not as obvious as, you know, straight up putting just look over there. I don't want to do that. I want to. I want to use this to kind of guide without being forceful. Let's see if I get it out of the light again. Oh yeah! Wow, cool. So you can see where the little guy's looking. By the time yeah. you get to that little guy, you're going to get caught up in those weird red, reddish shapes. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, and I think I'm even going to use some straight red because I want this. I want this area to just be directional. It's It should just be pulling people away from the edge. He's looking off canvas and I don't want that. So we gotta break that up. We gotta interrupt him. No, you cannot make us look away from this painting. You're gonna make us look back into it. And right there is where you're gonna make us look back into it, right back to those faces. So now we've got this kind of problem because you're drawing the viewer's eye in this circle down here and there's all this crap up here. I haven't done anything with that. I'm lazy, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Let's get some fix for that. And a fix for that is to make it a really high contrast area. So this is gonna look like a disaster. I'm warning you. This, looks, this is gonna look bad for a minute. Maybe even longer. I don't know. <laughs> could look bad forever. This is <laughs> we're allowed to waste paper. It's part of our job as artists to waste as much paper as possible. I mean, it just comes with the territory to waste the paper. So let's get a lot of black. Just very dark darkness from above here. Some dark shit coming. I'm even going to let it come near this guy, like that. Don't want any down there. Don't want any down there. Um, and you can see, with watercolor, it's really forgiving, because if you fuck up and you put it somewhere you don't want it, you literally get your wet rag and just scrub it away. And yeah, it'll kind of leave a stain or a mark. But if you were really serious, you could actually take a rough brush and scrub it hard until you actually fuck up the paper a little. Wipe it off, sand, a little sandpaper, high grit sandpaper, scrub it, start all over again with that little area. High, high grit sandpaper will take the paint, sur painted surface, the, the paper away without really damaging the paper too much. Cool. I don't wanna lighten this up too much. I want this to look fucked up. I want this area up here to be just unpleasant. I'm going to get in with a little bit of disaster level changing these shapes. Because I don't want these shapes to be all the same. And it's going to draw in from over here again. And draw your eye up. Because there's something going on up there. What the hell? i got to figure out what's going on up there. Hey, Phil. <laughs> Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. Well, He's taking Lulu out. Lulu, go outside. 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 Go
Go oh, hi, Lulu. Go, hi, Lulu. Lulu. Go chase the squirrel. Go kill Fat Gary the squirrel. Come on. Not me. I don't know. <laughs> go. Go. Go with Papa. Yeah. We have a squirrel named Fat Gary. I named him Fat Gary. I'm letting this dry for a second, and I'm going to have story time. Um, I don't even know how many people are watching, but... We have five watching, viewers right now. Including... If you're watching, this needs to dry, so you're going to hear about my squirrel. He was a baby little squirrel. I thought he was really cute. I started feeding him. I bought squirrel bird food, and I was feeding him away from the garden because I heard that was the way that you keep the squirrel from eating all your food. And then Fat Gary, well, at that time, he didn't have a name. And then he decided that he was going to eat every corn. He ate every corn. I planted 30 corn plants. All There is no corn. Oh, no. No corn. He ate every corn. One a day, <laughs> a corn. One a day. <laughs> Not just the corn cob. Eat the corn cob. All but plant. The corn's starting to grow. There's no <laughs> cob on it yet. He's just eating the plant. I, I went out there one day and I found him in the act. And then I realized he had gotten massive. And it was the same squirrel. He has a patch of brown on his side. It's the same squirrel. Oh, no. So I put cayenne on everything. Yeah. I, you, know, you put the cayenne powder and juice and liquid and shit all over everything. Yeah. And I put, I have bird, a bird feeder. And I put cayenne, I, I literally emptied it, put cayenne powder mixed with red pepper flakes into the bird feeder so like he would just get like Pavlovian scared of the bird feeder and I come out one morning and I look out the window at the bird feeder and he's in there fucking eating cayenne pepper covered <laughs> red pepper flakes like nothing <laughs> he likes it I'm like what the fuck this squirrel likes spicy food mm -hmm. his hands his little hands and his little face are covered in cayenne pepper like oh my I, God. <laughs> when I was putting it in the container I felt like I got maced. It was like mm, flashback mm -hmm. to WTO Seattle. Like, whoo, I remember this. You know, it was bad. And then he was out there eating it like nothing. <laughs> and he's massive. He's gotten huge. He's eating everything. And oh, I'm no. still eating it because he's fat Gary. I can't stop yeah. feeding him. I don't want to kill him. I mean. Well, now he's a neighborhood personality. Now he's like another mouth to feed. <laughs> He's eaten like 30 corn plants and I've got another 10 pound bag. I had to order another 10 pound bag of squirrel food. Like I didn't sign up for this pet. Travis says Gary is COVID-19 resistant. Hey, maybe. He totally is. He maybe totally there's, is. maybe there's he's, some genetic, you know, genetic. Uh, he's got the fucking vaccine, man. Thing going on with, with Gary. He walks on the power lines. He's like made of 5G, <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> he's so, made of 5G. <laughs> he's made of it. So this looks dry enough. So that's enough about Fat Gary and my struggle. This is anti-Bob Ross kind of shit here because he brought big <laughs> squirrels in his pocket. And I'm like, how do I kill this thing without... Oh my God. Him? It's true. That is the exact opposite of what he would do. This is anti-Bob Ross talk. <laughs> he always talked about squirrels at the ends of his show. They're so cute and we must love all nature's that's creatures. That's so funny. Everything's, you know, so... And... No. If, if I could kill Fat Gary without killing him and feeling bad about it forever... He'd be gone. <laughs> Deidre <laughs> says, keep feeding him. <laughs> I'm going to keep feeding him. I can't, I can't stop. Like, my God. It's, he's making, he's sending me to the poor house, this squirrel. I don't have money. He right? took over the whole garden. I mean, I'm eating rice and beans. And he's eating, right. like, peanuts and fresh corn and, like, fancy. <laughs> Not fair at all. She has seeds. And she, what is he, like, a naturopathic yoga instructor squirrel? I don't know. <laughs> So, so what I'm going to do, I've got all this darkness up here. It's, it's, it's dry enough. Um, I'm going to start making these kind of heavy marks of contrast. This is just contrast. And I've got a little acrylic mixed in here for texture. Texture. Um, I don't know what these shapes are. I don't know what any of this means. The meaning for an abstract piece or a, um, a non slightly abstract piece or a expressionist piece really I think to me comes it's meant to be subdued so that's the first thing and before I started I realized I wanted this to be like kind of representative of our uh, 
the situation of people who are still stuck in their houses and have been since the beginning of this and are god damn sick of it and and stir crazy i guess is, is what i was thinking in my mind this is kind of a stir crazy painting because of the the colors i chose um but that's as far as i went with what what could this mean before i started the meaning for me and the title and all of that that'll come at the end because i'm taking i'm taking from the from the paper instead of putting into the paper i'm very greedy i'm being very greedy i'm not i'm not giving anything i'm just taking shapes and stuff like these are all shapes that are already here in a way i'm not adding anything i'm just emphasizing what's already there and now we've got this area up here where there's all kinds of weird shit happening. Um, let me take a look at this. I don't like this. Fuck it up. Oh, it's the hidden hand here. I, I, you know, it's just gone. The hidden hand <laughs> is thing, like that other painting I told you about. I don't like the little guy looking off frame is what it is. I don't like him. He's bothering me. And I want this to become sort of an opposite to some random stuff that's that's kind of happening down here. And this is coming from these people. Get a little wet there. Um, Travis says squirrels are good eats. Just saying. Now, yes, I, I know this. <laughs> Brandon <laughs> says we should ask Fat Gary for rent. If Fat Gary was willing to pay rent, he would not run away every time I go outside. Aw. He won't take corn from your hands, just from behind your back. Phil's hand. Phil Hawkins. He can feed him. He can feed him? <laughs> He'll sit right next to him. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> He can feel my anger. <laughs> I'm projecting it every time I see him. I'm just, like, I'm, and I'm feeding him, and I'm, I'm, pour, I'm filling up the squirrel feeder thing, and I'm thinking, oh my god, can't you just die? And like, I know he knows. He knows. He knows what I think of him, that squirrel. And I go outside and I see the corn knocked down, and I curse at him and I yell at him and I say his name, and he knows. So I think this. I think this is better. I think this is more apt. And I'm going to go back to smaller brushes again because I now now that I have um, sort of a God, this is a I got to get rid of this. This is a little too Joe Exotic up here. Um, <laughs> I get I don't like that part right there. That part a little too much. Let's just kind of break it up a little bit. There we go. That's better. This corner I don't care. I don't want anything leading us out of this corner. So. We'll do this, get a little bright yellow in there, just to kind of, there we go, that's better. Um, down here is doing the same thing, uh, and I'm going to go down into that corner with um, that dull, dull down red, and I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of these shapes and lines that are leading our eye away. Again, these ab abstract pieces are all about the composition, not about the content. So I don't want any lines leading your eye out of the picture. So I don't want anything that points directly out of a corner. That's what mm -hmm. I was just getting rid of was this mm -hmm. tiger stripe shit here. Um, I still have these faces in the center and there's a pair of them. So the pair of faces is going to be what I do next. And this might get a little boring um, because all I'm going to be doing is going in and kind of hitting them up with a little white and just bringing out the highlights. Like I don't even want to, um, I don't even care about the shadows because the shadows are already made by all the color that was behind it. The, sh the, the the shapes were made by the mess I was making. I don't need to add. I don't need to give it more. Um, 
the less I do to it, the more your eye will fill in for me, the more work your brain and your eye are going to do. And anytime I can be lazy and make your brain do the work, I'm going to do it. So this is just highlights. These are just highlights so that these faces become a little bit more obvious here in the background. Brandon wants to know what the weight of the paper that you're using is. Um, right now, I'm only using, I think this is a, what is this? I think this is 100 pound, 100 and something pound. It's cool. medium weight. It's not the three good 300 pound paper. And it's a block. It's on a block. So um, when I use bigger, when I do bigger stuff, I usually use the 300 pound weight because it's not secured to anything. Um, like, let's see what I got here. like here's a good one on a on 300 pound block. Let me find one. Here we go. Pull it out of here. here. I'll show you the difference. This is 300 pound paper. So oh, wow. you can see my hands in the middle. It's not really bent that much. Wow. Yeah. The 22 by 30. So this is a pretty big, pretty big piece, but it's you know very thunderous <laughs> um this is what weight is this i don't i don't remember the weight on this one 150 lighter sound okay yeah way flimsier get your hand in the middle yeah when i work on something like this i'll tape around the edges and tape it down to a big piece of cardboard or um uh, a display board or foam core so that it stays nice and flat. And I'll usually, when I'm working, um, this one I didn't do it because this is a smaller quick painting, but I'm working on something really serious. I'll actually soak my paper, flatten it out, let it dry, soak it again, flatten it out, and then tape it down once it's dry. And that the sizing is why it buckles like this, because the sizing is, is kind of inconsistent throughout. You can see it's got a kind of wave to it, especially right there. It goes in and out. Um, but if you um, if you prep it a little bit further, a little bit more, and you tape it down strongly, and you got a good block, um, you end up with less of that. And of course, after this is done, I'll restretch it. It makes a huge difference. So a thinner paper like this, if I take this. Um, if I take this and I, uh, wet the back and then tape it down securely to particle board or something with, um, uh, waterproof tape and I stretch it, stretch it out as hard as I can while it's soaking wet, it will, um, it will get rid of that buckling. Mm. You can also use a weight. You can put another piece of cheap bristol or watercolor paper on top while you're you know soak the whole back of this get that cheap paper put it on top and then put a weight on it a heavy book or if you have you know a weight or a, a presser you can do that and let it stay there until it's completely flat and dry you can use t-shirt too if you don't have another piece of paper that's cheap um, it'll dry out faster that way if you use fabric and it completely flattens it now, if you have a press, you're very fucking. Oh my God. I'm uh, probably about 15 minutes from finishing this. So I'm going into a second live just to finish it. Um, all I've got left are these faces and then I think I'm done. So I think I'm gonna stay in this live the secondary live. I'm going to wait and see if Day comes back. Because Day was doing a great job handling talking to me and keeping me from uh, zoning out. It's easy to zone out. Um, and just work and not think about what I'm saying to you guys. But I'm almost done. So I don't want to just like go away and leave you with an unfinished painting. And I see Travis, I see you're already back. Because <laughs> you're smart. You knew this was going to happen. How did you know this was going to happen? 
I didn't even know that was going to happen. I think it only gives me an hour. I keep trying to set up on different services. I don't have enough TikTok followers to go there and do this. If I did it there, I could make money off it. And that would be nice. If I could do Twitch, I could make money off it. That would be nice. I can't do either one of those, so I can't make any money off it. And my, my YouTube can't be monetized because I fucking curse all the goddamn time. Oh, here, let me add Day back in. I was just pointing out that I wanted to finish this and I've got about 10 or 15 minutes left. So I didn't Perfect. want to die. Um, and then I was telling Travis and, and who else, somebody else, uh, Bonifim, that, uh, look I, like it's, it's us and Travis now. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was going to say, you know, I, I tried to do this on TikTok, and I don't have enough followers there to even live stream. They won't let you? No. I, I, can't, know that. I, I can't connect my Facebook to my TikTok to add friends or let them find me. I can't connect. Hmm. I don't know. I can't do anything there. Um, so I have like almost no followers there. I need a thousand to start streaming. Well, let's see if we can promote you a bit and get you more TikTok followers and then we can use TikTok. It would be great because I can get paid there. <laughs> yeah, let's do that for you. <laughs> And then Twitch. Or Twitch. I mean, maybe we could figure out a way to do it through Twitch. Twitch would be great, but I keep having um, volume issues and like it wants me to be horizontal. And I know I can get paid more if I'm using Twitch. Yeah. Or paid at all. I'm not getting paid at all for this. Um, but um, I can't figure out how to get it to work. So I, I don't know what to do about that. Mm. I, can, I can stream there. I just can't get it to work properly. And I think this is pretty much done. I'm going to give um, this front face has a very sort of very cynical glance at us. That's what's going on here. It's glance. She's glancing at us in a very cynical sort of way. And I want to kind of emphasize just that last little detail in there that this person is not happy to have been found in this painting. Oh my God, they're not happy that I found them. Well, too goddamn bad. I'm sorry you're in this painting. It's later than you think. Enjoy yourself while you're still in the thing. I'll sing to you guys the whole time. No watchers at all. <laughs> Although, if you've been tattooed by me, I, I've sung to you before. <laughs> have you tattooed Travis? I have, many times, yeah. Well, that's that's why he stuck around. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, he knows what's going on. Actually, uh, Travis, his partner, his kid, fuck everybody. Awesome, everybody, cool. Everybody that Travis <laughs> knows. <laughs> All right, I think that's good. I think that's it. I think they're in there. I'm gonna sign it with my special special baby signature brush. Fuck yeah, cool. My favorite thing to do is use the tiniest little brush. <laughs> there it is. Let's see it. And. It's not done yet. Wait one second. Because there's the last, the last step, the most satisfying part of doing a watercolor painting is this. Ah, cool. Look at that crisp edge. And this one I did something extra special.
Oh, cool. You made like a border. What's that? You made like a border? Well, yeah, you tape it off at the very beginning before you put any paint, any water, anything. Awesome. And it, it not only holds the corners down and the edges sort of flat, look at all this tape, but it gives you a nice white edge all the way around the painting. Wow, cool. So that is the painting. And then the best thing to do then, where's my shiv? Is to find your shiv and <laughs> shiv. You need a shiv. Sorry, you need this, you need this. And then you get in there in between the two sheets, cut towards yourself, because that's safe. Yeah, that's always the way to go. Right for your own neck with a shiv. <laughs> is she? <laughs> Telling people how to do this properly, okay? <laughs> and you know, as you cut towards your own neck with the shiv, the paint <laughs> separate from the block. You can come up, up towards your neck. It's even better. And you're just separating the paper because the paper's held onto the block with a little bit of wax. There's the block. There's the painting. I'll bring it up a little closer just so you can see what happened. And it's actually, because it's watercolor and acrylic, um, this painting is pretty much dry already and ready to go. Whoa, the light. There we wow. Go. That's the painting. Wow. That's, that's what was happening. And you can see this cynical. Wow. Action. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, there's almost like a third person here mm -hmm. looking this way now. But there was a little guy you can see a big shadow ghost of him there. Yeah. Like that. He was he was drawing your everyone's eye out out of frame. And we want we want people's eyes to come into frame. Thanks, Travis. Thanks. This makes me think of like woodland nymphs, like forest spirits. It's got a little bit of that feeling. Yeah, they got that kind of stuff hanging out. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this is really rad. This is amazing, Angie. <laughs> there <it> is. <laughs> um so yeah, that's today. That's working with subdued colors. Um, all I really talked about with subdued colors was avoiding, you know, uh, the bright blue and, and allowing that to be behind and mixing, instead of mixing black to make a color darker, which also makes it duller, try to mix its opposite because then you end up with these nice brown tones. This is red and green, red and green mixed together. Um, and here we have red and black. And as you can see, it's still red. It's just like dull, dark bruisiness in between. If you want to dull something down and make it less bright, don't mix it with black. Mix it with its opposite. If you want to make something darker and duller, mix it with black. If you want to make something lighter and duller, mix it with white. You can see up here, the yellow that's unmixed is the brightest thing up here. And the yellow that's been mixed with white is not as vivid. Mm. So subduing the colors, you can either add its opposite or you can add white or black. And then I did the fancy little extra taping edge down here just to make it look weird and rough. Um, but yeah, that's our, that's our painting for today. Only took me two, two live sessions to do. I'll try to, um, I'll try to clip them together somehow and, um, and put the whole thing up on YouTube. And if you're watching, because I can't Twitch and because I can't TikTok and because I can't YouTube and I can't make any money off of doing live videos, my Venmo is in my bio. So it sounds so futuristic, but you don't have to do that. Um, you can just tune in next time. I think I'm going to do these every Friday um, around the same time, a little earlier or later. Oh, yeah. Yay. Hi, that was Holly. great. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye, Angie. Bye, Bye. everyone. <laughs> for helping. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm going to end it. End. End.